Ever wondered what makes a French woman French? A certain je ne sais quoi? And a lot more. Follow in the footsteps of storyteller Edith de Belleville, a native Parisian who brings to life the hidden histories of the great women who shaped and influenced the France we know today. In each part of this radio series, Edith will take you to a different arrondissement of Paris with plenty of anecdotes and secrets to share. Ooh la la, mais oui. Episode number five, Ninon de L'Enclos. Edith, tell us who Ninon de L'Enclos was. She was a great courtesan from the 17th century. I would say a great courtesan for a grand siècle because 17th century is the golden age of France, French literature, music, arts, the century of Louis XIV. And she's even um, the icon for the courtesan uh, from the 19th century because she was very, um, she became educated and she became rich. So, and a lot of spirit. So she was the model of all the courtesans who appeared later in 18 and 19th, 20th century. She was born the 10 um, November 1623. We're not very sure when she was born, maybe 1620 or 1623 in Paris. Her father was... Um, a fighter, not very faithful, and he was playing lute, and um, he taught her daughter to play lute, and her mother was, people say she was very religious, let's say she was a little religious, as people were in 17th century, and her father was involved in a murder, he killed someone, yes, and uh, so he had to escape. So at 10 years old, she lost a beloved father. Probably that's the image of um, the man, tough man she had later. Not only she lost, uh, well, she lost her father and she lost her virginity very soon. I mean, very soon, not very soon, but in the 17th century, you don't lose your virginity if you're not, if you're not married. And uh, she was not. She was playing, I said she was playing lute very well, so um, she was playing lute and singing in the salon, the tree salon in Le Marais, because she was living Rue des Trois Pavillons now, it's a Rue Elsevier with a mother. And her mother used a daughter to get money to show her, you know, she was singing and playing lute. She was an excellent musician. And little by little, uh, well, what she could do, she didn't have a virginity anymore. She didn't have money, so how she could get married? She couldn't. Her mother died in 1642, and she found a man who protected her, Monsieur Coulon, who was uh, working at the parliament. She was uh, around 20 years old, and this is how she started to be courtesan. Something important, you have to know that prostitution was forbidden in France since 1560. But a courtesan was not a, a prostitute according to French law. They were more tolerant with the courtesan than with the prostitute because the prostitutes they were going in uh, America or in jail, a hospital, a salpetriere, which was uh, in fact jail. So she had the first uh, lover, let's say, and he was paying uh, a lot. Uh, the her fee were, uh, was uh, 500 uh, by month, 500 livres. And of course, you would say, how much is it? Uh, uh, just to compare, Corneille, Pierre Corneille, the writer, had uh, 2,000 livres by year, meaning Ninon had more money than Pierre Corneille. You see, uh, literature doesn't, it's interesting, but it's better to be a courtesan, you have more money. So she was uh, very well off. So she could have stayed, have kept one man, but something happened in her life before meeting uh, Monsieur de Coulon, her first uh, lover. She was in love with a man 
and uh, Coligny Chatillon, the descendant of the famous Protestants, he was full of lace because in the 17th century the men were wearing lace. And he was talking, talking, talking very nicely, like the French man can do romance, poetry. And he dumped her. So she suffered a lot. So since then, she decided that she will dump men and she will be uh, never dumped. She was, she was successful because she was excellent in communication and in marketing. Her idea was, okay, I will ask money, but I won't be a cheap courtesan. So she had three kind of men. The payers, who had to pay, as I told you, a minimum of a, a lot. It, let's say it's 4,000 euros by month. Yes, not cheap. To have an intimate conversation in a cozy yellow bedroom or more. The martyrs who were waiting to perhaps one day become a payer. And the favorites were the men she chose, the men she loved. And for them, it was free. She really, a motto of Ninon was to behave like a man. That's the idea. That's why she's so modern, to be free. So, a first love was uh, Henri de Sévigné, the, f the husband of the famous lady Madame de Sévigné. She was a uh, love at first sight between them and he didn't pay and he wrote to, we know because they wrote letters and Henri de Sévigné wrote to Bussy Rabutin who was the cousin of Madame de Sévigné. I spent a delightful night with Nino, you cannot imagine and uh, you can imagine it was not with your cousin, meaning not with Madame de Sévigné. Because the key, what are the key of a success? Why she was so successful? So I said because, not cheap. She was very picky with men, so all the men wanted her. And she, because you had many courtesans, but she was using um, art of conversation to seduce men. She was not only uh, beautiful, but she was using uh, passion and words. And she expressed, um, with Henri de Sévigné, it's true she was in love, probably, but I mean, it was not only physical with Nino, it was the body and the spirit. It's very important because she was using words as an erotic tool. You have even a, a poem of saint Evremont, who was a, f a friend, who was a philosopher, who said, you can use the words to wake up a man, meaning sexually to wake up him, because she knew how to use an erotic tool, you know, s talking in a bed. Can you tell us a little bit more about how she got educated? Because she didn't come from an educated background. Uh, she had to learn. Yes, because she was coming from where well, her parents were not very rich and uh, she socially she was very uh, well known at, uh, during her life. Probably it's uh, Saint Evremont who was a philosopher who taught her. She, he was uh, in exile in England, Saint Evremont, and they were writing to each other. And uh, what is funny, she was living, you can see where she was living, uh, 36 Rue des Tournelles in Le Marais, and you have a plaques and it's written here was living uh, Ninon uh, de l'Enclos very famous woman a philosopher and when I saw this I said well if having sex and asking money is to be a philosopher many many philosophers in, in the world eh? no I mean I cannot tell she was a philosopher she was more like we say she like Epicure but the philosopher were the people she, she received in a, in, a, in a salon meaning La Rochefoucauld Molière, Lully, saint Evremont, she couldn't because he was in exile, but it's true. She was what we call a libertine. Um, the word libertine has a different meaning in 17th century than in 18th century. Now when you, you talk about libertine, you think you have many lovers. That's the idea. In 17th century, the words come the word freedom, and it's a freedom first of spirit, meaning you don't believe in God or you criticize God. So first, she's a libertine of a spirit. She wants, that's why she's so modern, to be a free woman. Second, of course, libertine, because she has an affair with men and she chooses a, a lover, which is a very new. So, Edith, you have an anecdote for us now about Ninon and how she acted in front of people, how... Uh, open and dramatic she was. 
Yes, she was. Uh, we know all this first. I have to say it. It's thanks to Talmand de Réo. It's him who wrote everything. So she she was on um, Cour la Reine in a f very fancy uh, district in Paris, and she saw a young man about. 30 years old, very good looking and she really um, went to take him and to ask him do you want to come with me? Can you imagine, it's 17th century a woman, she's not married no? to come in front of everybody uh, to say come in my home oh he came but she didn't jump on him as you can wait you can think as a prostitute would do no, not at all, first she offered him to have a dinner And after dinner, something warm in uh, where she was living. And after she told him, maybe you will have company, a mystery. She was mysterious, sulfurous, you know. So he was waiting, meaning after they had to do what they, they did. But d d just you understand that not only she behaved like a man, but she was very refined, meaning when you want an intimate relationship with a man, she used the food she used the words you know that's why she was and she used the spirit mm -hmm. that's why she was so famous as we've been learning Ninon de Lenclos experimented in sexual ways and she was able to pass on her knowledge to young women of the time tell us about her love teaching Yes, she was a speciality, you know. Even the regent, the the son of La Palatine, and Monsieur, who is the the brother of the Louis XIV, the the mother La Palatine was very proud because a son, the regent, went uh, to 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 be with her. Yes, she was a love teacher because she taught to the young man it's very important not to be rude with, with ladies, to be refined and delicate, to talk nicely, not to be vulgar. And for example, even the gay men, she had a lover as a Condé, le Duc d'Anguin, le Grand Condé, very well known as a great soldier, but he was very gay too. So she had, for example, if you a gay man and you had to marry, you need to have kids and you don't like very much uh, ladies. So you go to see uh, Nino and she will uh, explain you how to act uh, to have kids and, <laughs> and how to behave well. Don't laugh because it's, it was true. And she was very open-minded, you know, I told you. She, she didn't care. She had uh, lovers who were gay. She didn't mind, you know, very open-minded uh, woman. Um, the other thing of Ninon, it's um, that she knew sex, sexuality, because you have to think 17th century. The, the ladies, they don't know their own body. And it's a sin to have uh, sex if you don't want kids. So the problem first is uh, you go when you're a man and you want to have fun, you go to see court, is a prostitute. And very important, these professionals, they, they know how not to have kids. That's a contraception. That's another thing in 17th century. Ninon, she was using a wool sponge full of uh, wine. Yeah, like a diaphragma, you know, she was putting the, the wool sponge diaphragm. full, yeah, diaph um, how do you say, diaphragm, diaphragm mm -hmm. because they knew the wine uh, was uh, to kill the, the, the sperm, spermicide and uh, the disease. So she was using this inside her, you know, because she had only one kid. So it, it was a fish, it worked, yes. So you have to think that the, the, the sexuality of ladies was not great. You know, you have the, the image people had from um, Aristotle and uh, Aristotle and Hippocrates. The concept are the temper. People think the man has a temper is a dry and warm, so it's good. And the woman, she's humid and cold, which is not good. So, and they even thought that the um, sexual uh, organs of the, of the lady was exactly the same, but inside than the man, can you imagine? And the lady doesn't know, of course, her body, you know? And you don't have internet, you cannot, uh, you, how, do, how can you learn, you know? So for the lady, it was uh, not a very, it's a, you have always to remind, 17th century is a century of men. That's why Nino is so modern, because she was a lady and she did succeed. So how do you know sexuality? You have a book, Forget About Fifty Shades of Grey. The first pornographic book is French, of course. 
It was uh, published, uh, not in France, probably in Holland, uh, in 1655, and the name is uh, L'Ecole des Filles, the School of Girls. It's the talk, it's two ladies, one is older, one is younger, uh, Suzanne et Fanchon, and Suzanne is teaching Fanchon how to use a body, how to have pleasure, how to give pleasure, but not only. It's uh, not a, a vulgar uh, book. It's, uh, she talks about uh, even the conversation and the words, as I told you. And she talks, it's funny, about the um, sex toys in velvet. We learned they had sex toys in velvet, in, uh, in glass, very funny, in position, the Kama Sutra and everything. And so what is interesting is the school of girls, it's an old lady who is teaching love to a young lady. And some historians said, oh, but of course, it's Ninon de Lanclos, older, Suzanne, who is teaching to Madame de Maintenon. I mean, Madame de Maintenon, as everybody knows, she married Louis XIV when she was older. So it's true that Ninon de Lanclos knew very well uh, Madame de Maintenon. At this time, she was uh, Madame Scarron. Scarron was a very famous poet in Le Marais. So people said... Madame de Maintenon had an affair with Ninon de Lanclos because uh, they were lesbian and so uh, we were not in a bed. But anyway, she was a. Uh, she knew sex. And when I talk to you about School of Girls, L'Ecole des Filles, immediately you think about a very famous theatre play, L'Ecole des Femmes, School of Women by Molière. Of course, at this time, the people, uh, School of Women was in 1662, so later, but the people, of course, had in mind because it was a huge bestseller, School of Girls. But it's not the same inspiration. But still, Molière is uh, talking about education of, of, of uh, ladies, of girls, of young girls. It's always the same problem. I mean, if a uh, lady uh, girl has no, uh, is not educated, it, it, it's not a good thing. So... In a salon, to make the link with Molière and uh, Ninon de Lanclos, she received uh, Molière and Lully. And now we're going to hear the music, uh, made the music Lully, who was uh, a gay too, a gay. She received Lully in a salon. And Molière, it's Le Mariage Forcé. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about her beauty and hygiene routines. Uh, apparently, she, even in her old age, she looked much younger than what her actual age was. What were her secrets? Yes, because all the, the nobility from Paris were wondering how Ninon could stay so young and attractive. Because at 60 years old, she could still easily pass for a woman of 40 years old. And in the 17th century, a woman of 40 years old was considering very old, but not Nino. First, she was, she stayed always slim and fresh all of her life, uh, thanks to a strict diet. Uh, people, for example, were drinking heavy wine and spicy food, but Nino was eating light food and she was drinking only water. And uh, about the hygiene, in 17th century, uh, people didn't use water because they thought water would bring disease into the pore of the skin. So they didn't take bath. They were, they were um, washing themselves, as we call in French, um, dry uh, toilet, in toilette sèche. Uh, the word toilet now comes from the word, you know, a petite toile, a small um, fabric, a small wash cloth. So we're putting uh, the water of orange, um, flower of orange, orange, orange blossom. Yes, orange blossom. And they were washing only the face and the hands. They were changing uh, three times a day um, clothes. They had uh, clean clothes, but they didn't use water. So you can imagine the smells. And perfume? 
a lot, a lot to cover, a lot to cover. But Ninon, she was using water. That's why she was so different, so modern. She was taking bath and she was even using um, the space for the thigh. Le salon des cuisses, le bidet. She was using this yeah. to, okay. to, to, be, to, be, to wash herself everywhere. That's how she was modern. And she was using a mixture for, uh, to not to have wrinkles. Uh, first of all, women, uh, ladies did avoid sunshine. You had to be white because if you were uh, tan, it, mean, it was meaning you were, uh, you were walking in a countryside. And as you woman lady from the nobility, you don't go, you don't walk in the countryside. So, for example, in Versailles, it's very funny. They were using a velvet mask. They had to, to cover the face and they had to close the mask with the teeth so they couldn't speak. Just, just to be white, you know. And she was uh, using a mixture with uh, onion and uh, rose water and almonds to an oil to put on her body and um, sperms of whales. Yes, well, I don't know where she could find sperm of whales, but anyway, now we're lucky, Oli, because we don't have to use this. Uh, to What can we use instead? Uh, well, I don't know, a very expensive uh, cream. Ah, wax, wax. These wax? Yes, this is why. I mean, I checked on the internet, you know, I yeah. checked. And you have Ninon's uh, recipes are on there? Yeah. Yes, yes, you have an American lady. It's very funny. She's explaining and she say use a wax because, uh, well, me, I wouldn't. But if you want to look like her. No, she was very slim. And if you watch the first newspaper, Le Mercure Galant, and if you see the fashion plates, the French fashion plates or the Paris, you can you will see uh, Parisian women were already slim because that's why they were wearing a corset you know you have to be curvaceous but to be slim very important tell us a little bit more about Ninon's appearance she was quite a looker yes yeah, she was well there were women uh, more pretty than she was but uh, what she had was a, a look her eyes she had black eyes and she had dark uh, hair and she was of course very white and she had a very sparkling look you know very smart this is what she had her uh, eyes and the specificity was she had passion passion even in the art of conversation She could talk about any subject, basically. Yes, and she, you had to be very educated. You were invited, she was invited people from five to nine in a yellow bedroom and you had a tea with a violet. It was a favorite beverage, a hot chocolate, extremely, extremely expensive. And you had to be um, agreeable, not vulgar and nice, educated. And she was, a uh, little trick was to talk about the subject that men like, like hunting, wars, philosophy, but always being extremely, extremely feminine. That was a secret. It's very efficient. I can tell you girls, it's efficient. <laughs> And uh, she lived until uh, 85 years old, always looked slim, very respectful woman. She even Louis XIV was asking what Nino thinks about this subject, you know. Yeah, she was, she became from Nino, she became Mademoiselle de L'Enclos, very um, respectful woman. And I will end with a quotation of La Bruyère, moralist, that exactly what he said, that was a secret. Une belle femme qui a les qualités d'un honnête homme et ce qu'il y a au monde d'un commerce plus délicieux, l'on trouve en elle tout le mérite des deux sexes. There is nothing more delightful in the world than a beautiful woman who has the same qualities as an educated man. In this way, she has the best of both sexes. Ninon de L'Enclos lived quite a scandalous life and uh, she created quite an uproar wherever she went and she was actually in some ways punished for that. Tell us what happened to her in the course of her life and how she had to modify some things. Yes, because um, you had Anne of Austria, she was a regent and uh, she was a... 
influenced by the Parti des Devots. I mean, very, very religious uh, people. And uh, people, you know, she was uh, having an affair, and, you know, she had an affair with a married man. So you can imagine the wives, they were not very happy. And plus, in a salon, there were the young people were talking, uh, it was free, so they could criticize religion. So it was not far from Le Louvre, you know, and so the people couldn't, the power, Anne of Austria couldn't uh, bear this. So she sent Ninon to the convent, first in a Madelonette in Paris, uh, for Madelonette Marie Madeleine, the prostitute. And it was funny because you had all the VIP people came to climb the wall to like a demonstration, free Ninon, free Ninon, you know, because she had many, many uh, lovers and fan club. She had a huge fan club because she was very funny and lively. So she was sent in a better uh, convent, more comfortable, in Lagny, 30 kilometers from Paris. And uh, the people came too, and it was funny, you had like a budget hotel, the name was uh, Les Pays Royal, the royal uh, sword. And the guy, the owner, became very rich because all the fancy VIP people came to visit her. And uh, another eccentric, uh, crazy woman from the 17th century came to see her was uh, Christine of Sweden. Christine de Suède, who is another, she would deserve another episode, but uh, she's the only person she wanted to see, uh, Christine de Suède. People say she set free, uh, Nino, but it's not true, in fact. She stayed at least uh, six months in the convent. If Ninon de L'Enclos was here with us in Paris Day, what would she be doing? What would her career be? Oh, she would be definitely the love coach, international love coach that uh, all men, women would go to seduce, or even sex uh, advice, but refined, not vulgar, as you see now, you know. She would be extremely popular uh, everywhere in the world, you know, and how to stay uh, always slim, how to keep your diet, how to be educated. You know, we found 60 books, which is a lot, because when you know the price of the books in 17th century, Molière had 150 and Nino had 60 books and many mirrors in a bedroom. Yes, always, you know, always mixing kinky woman, but educated. That's the secret for all the ladies.